Hey guys, this is Mitch with Fine Point CGI, and today we're going to talk about making a, a Resident Evil styled pre-rendered system inside of Godot. Now, this method was used a lot back in the PlayStation era because graphics weren't nearly as powerful as they are today. So what they would do is they would pre-render it inside of a rendering program. In our case, it's going to be Blender. In your case, it could be any program you would like. And they would import that image into their game engine and they would overlay that over their scene. So that way they could have a nice looking image with their character. Now, there are two ways to handle this and we're gonna cover both of them. Technically, there's more ways, but I'm only gonna cover two because this tutorial can't get too long. Um, but the first method that we're going to do is the standard method where what we're going to do is we're going to go into Blender. We're going to render out our scene. We're going to project our UVs on to that image, and then we're going to bring it over into Godot, create a camera system and uh, kind of show the advantages and disadvantages of that system. The other major way to do it is to do what's called a screen space shader. And this method was very common as well back then because you wouldn't need to render any background assets. It's just the image and a depth texture to tell you what objects are where. And to achieve that, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to write a shader to do that. So we're going to go through the shader. We're going to write that. And then we will go ahead and show you how depth textures work and the advantages and disadvantages to that system. So that's what I have in store for you guys today. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing that we have to do is we have to create our scene. Now, I've already created a scene for this tutorial. If you guys want a tutorial on how to create stuff in Blender, let me know and I'll be more than happy to walk you guys through it. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of show you what it looks like. So if we go to render mode here, you'll see kind of what we have. So we have a very basic environment. I'm not exactly a um, full time 3D artist. So, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say it's the most beautiful stuff in the world, but it'll at least get the point across for what we're trying to do. Now, if I spend more time on it, it'd probably look better. But I wanted to just get you guys something that you guys could see and at least compare and contrast, right? So first we need to have our scene and you can see how it looks. And basically that's all you'll need. So if you guys need, you guys can download this scene. I have a link to it in the description below and you guys can just download it, open it up with your blender file and then you'll be good to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into wireframe mode. So I'm going to hit Z wireframe. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select the elements that I think will be um, collidable for the user or something that needs to exist. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the environment. I'm going to select the little pot right here. And I'm going to go ahead and select this environment. And I think that's really all I need out of the entire group. So we're going to take this, we're going to hit shift D to duplicate it. So we have two of them. And I believe I just missed my, let me make sure that I have it. So I'm going to shift select this one as well. And I'll give you guys a quick blurb on how to move around in Blender. So middle mouse button will allow you to rotate shift and middle mouse button will allow you to pan. And then the scroll wheel up will allow you to zoom in. And the scroll wheel down will allow you to zoom out. So that's just something to keep in mind. And I'll try calling out my commands as I go. And if not, you'll see them right here in the bottom right hand corner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit shift D to duplicate these two, these objects here. And what I'm going for is I'm going for objects that are going to occlude the player when they run around. So if you hit zero on your numpad, you'll see that the, what we're going to see. So if I hit Z and go to solid, you'll see what the camera is going to see. And you'll notice that the player is basically only able to go into this area. So they're not going to collide with things like this. They're not going to really occlude that it's going to be small enough that they're not going to see that. 
and they're not going to really be able to, to occlude that. So we're pretty much good to go with what we have. So now that we've duplicated our objects here, so you can see I have them all, we'll go ahead and move them to a new collection. So hit M and then click on new collection and we'll move that to collection two. We'll go ahead and click OK. And what that's going to do is if we go up here to our little inspector here, or our little um, outliner, we're going to go ahead and click down on our collection and here's our other collection of objects. Now I'm going to hide all the other objects and this is what we are going to be using for our level geometry. It's going to be really simple and easy to use. Now our final geometry will be a little bit more dense than this and the reason why is because of how projection mapping works and we can get there when we get there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show our other assets hide this asset and then turn off rendering on this asset. Okay. And I may need to zoom in for you guys. So hold on. Let me check to see if my preferences are saved because I thought I changed this, but the screen looks awfully small for you guys. So let me go ahead and change that. So we'll go ahead and bring this up to something like, I don't know, 133, my apologies. And what we can do is we can basically just go ahead and hit F12. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna tell Blender to go ahead and render this at a hundred samples. So this is gonna take a long time. So I'm gonna be right back. Now you guys will see just how messy that image was, but then it did a nice good cleanup. One of the things I love about Blender nowadays is that it does this cool little cleanup here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and save this out. So We'll go ahead and hit image, save, and I'm going to go ahead and save this out on my desktop because I'm lazy and I don't really want to deal with it. So we'll go ahead and call it ren projection render.png. We'll go ahead and save that. And I'm going to go ahead and close this. Now from here, I can hide my collection, show my other collection of objects, my lower poly collection here. I'm going to hit zero on my numpad so I can see it from my viewport here. I'm going to go over to UV editing and you'll see that I'm sitting right here and you can see all my UVs and stuff like that going on right here. So I can tab and kind of look at all these guys, right? As you know, but what I can do is if I select all of them and I hit tab, I get them all at once. And if I hit A, you'll see that my entire UV map is absolutely horrendous, right? There's just so much stuff going on. Well, what I can do is I can go ahead, tab out of edit mode, hit control J to join this as one big solid object. And then I can come into my materials. I can get rid of all of my materials and go ahead and add a new one. Now, one of the things that we'll have to look at if I rotate to leave my, my uh, camera view, one of the things we'll have to look at is we're going to have to separate this out. So we'll hit link P separate by selection. So we hit L P separate by selection, tab out of edit mode, hit zero, select both of these guys, tab A, and then what we need to do is we need to go ahead and project from our view. So we'll hit U, project from view. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna tell Blender to come here and calculate out exactly how this is going to look in three-dimensional space on a 2D plane. Now I know it looks really funky, but once we go up to our untitled here, and if we hit middle mouse button and move it, you'll see that we can rotate this or slide this along here. And then we'll go ahead and hit the file icon and we'll select our projection render and go ahead and click open image. And you'll notice that it now matches up almost perfect to what we would expect. If we select our table, you see that it matches up. If we select our floor, you'll see that our floor matches up perfectly. Now, one thing that we'll notice if we hit the middle mouse button up here and slide this over and we go into material mode, Blender's going to think for a minute and it'll start attempting to render this. You'll notice that A, everything is white. In our materials, we can come down here, go to our emission, 
click on this little icon here and then go to image texture. And then we're going to go ahead and click on this little icon here. And then you'll see all the different things I have going on here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make it my projection render. And then you will see that blender will try to figure out how to make this look good. And if we come up to our base color, we could do the same thing. So we can click on that image, select this, and then do projection render. And there we go. Now you'll notice something. Everything looks terrible. And I'm not quite sure why, but with Blender, for some reason, all of your UVs become massively warped if there's not enough definition in your UVs. So if you just select this environment, tab, control R, add a couple of loop cuts, and by a couple, I mean a lot of them. So you use your mouse wheel to scroll up and down on the amount of loop cuts. So we'll just go ahead and add a bunch. And we'll do the exact same thing here. So we're going to add a couple here, add one here, add one here, add one here, just control R and add a few loop cuts. And you're going to want to try to make this as square as humanly possible. You can see how everything's kind of square. Now we'll want to do the same thing here and the same thing here. And now if I hit a U project from view, you'll notice that suddenly everything snaps back into place the way exactly how we want it to be. So if we tab, you can see our scene looks like it should be there. We do have a slight problem here that we need to address. So we'll go ahead and add a few loop cuts there. You project from view. And it looks like this one's just wanting to be a little bit difficult. So let's see what's going on here. I might just allow for it and call it a day, but we can go ahead and select these UVs and kind of pull it over a tiny bit. Maybe if we want to, to kind of help stretch it back into place, but then it warbles that. So I'll just control R control R to make that a little bit more defined. And it does not like that. Let me see. Let's add a few loop cuts like that to project from view. That'll help that out a little bit. You can see how that straightened all that up. This one, on the other hand, I'm not sure how we're going to fix it because we could just keep adding details to it. But honestly, I think I'll just bring the object in. So we'll just select the object and then shift duplicate it and then go ahead and move it to our new collection. So we'll hit M and then we'll go collection two. And then that way we just have it there. I think that's going to be an easier fix than actually going in and fixing it. But you can see how easy that was. Look at how nice that looks. It looks like our render for the most part. We do have some warble in the floorboards that we could add more details if we want to, but we don't have to. So from here, we can take this and you can see if we move anywhere in this scene, it just completely destroys the illusion. Uh, it's just completely ruined, but it does a pretty good job for that specific view. Now we can go ahead and put our camera in our scene. We actually do have a camera already put in here. If you drag this down and scroll up, you'll see that my camera is right here. So we're going to drag this up out of our scene collection close our collection down. You'll see our cameras right here. We're going to select all four of these objects, hit file export as a G L T F. You're going to want to make sure that you include your selected objects. I've already exported this once, but I want to make sure that you guys can uh, see it, you know, so selected objects and we'll go ahead and make sure that we check camera data. So that way we have our camera as well. And then we'll go ahead and click export GLTF. And I want to make sure that we have everything correct. I think that'll work. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And then I'm going to go out, open up my Godot project. So hold on one second. And then we're going to go ahead and go to our desktop, grab both of our 
projection render and projection tutorial object and we will drag that into here and Godot is going to go ahead and do its best to to import all of this data we're going to go ahead and double click on our projection tutorial glb new inherited and you will see that we have our camera right here which is awesome it did it did all the work for us so now if we go to preview you will see that we basically have what we rendered out in our project here now we're going to need to do some adjustment here to make our stuff look good you'll notice first everything has a bluish sheen to it and nothing looks like it exists in this world and the reason why is because we are not using shadeless for our materials so if we select our cube right here and we go to our mesh and then we come down to our surface we select our material you'll notice that when we go to flags unshaded is not checked on so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and check that on so we'll click on and you'll notice suddenly everything looks way better which is great then what we need to do is we need to go ahead and do the exact same thing on our other objects so if we go to our cube we click on that we click on this guy, we come to our surface, we click on our material, unshaded, it's correct, albedo is correct, so everything looks like it's correct here. If we click on our cylinder and we go ahead and click on it, it has its emission texture. Technically, we could just go ahead and nix that, but I'm going to keep it because I might as well. And from here, we can go ahead and hit Control S and save this as projection tutorial.tscn. So now we have a scene attached to this. From here, let's go ahead and talk about how to basically move, how somebody be, would move around this scene, right? So let's add in a basic player controller. So let's right click, add in a child node, and let's add a kinematic body. And then let's right click that, add in another child node, and let's add in collision. So we need to have some kind of collision shape. In our case, our shape here is going to be a capsule shape. And we're going to need to right click our kinematic body, add in another child node, and add in a mesh node. So we'll say mesh instance. And we'll go ahead and change our mesh from empty to a new capsule mesh. Now, if we go ahead and get out of our preview, and you can see how beautiful that looks, uh, we can go ahead and grab our collision, rotate it by 90 wrong 90 there we go and rotate our mesh instance also by 90 so we'll grab our transform and we will rotate it by 90 and then we can go ahead and change our collision size to be thinner because it's a thick collision box we have here so we'll just kind of make it a bit more reasonable in size so we'll just kind of drag this and then we'll go ahead and adjust the scale of this object until it kind of fits in our collision size. So we'll just kind of put it about that, give or take, just because I think that the default of two, uh, two meters is just a little bit too large, especially for a player. So from here, we can grab our kinematic 2D, kind of drag it over here and drag it up. And if we adjust the size on it a little bit to make it just a touch bit smaller because I don't like the size of this. We'll just kind of shrink it down and then grab our collision shape and also shrink it down a touch and then pull it out just a tiny bit like that. There we go. That's a bit better, a little bit more reasonable to work with. You'll notice that if we go to view and we change our viewports to top down like so, and then we click on our camera and we click preview you can see what we can what the player would be able to see now if we move our kinematic body behind the table you'll notice that we actually get proper controls you can see that it actually looks like it exists like it belongs in this scene and that's because it's actual geometry so it exists and it belongs so Let's quickly create a small player controller so we can kind of run around the scene and then we can kind of start setting the stuff up. So we're going to go ahead and right click our kinematic body. We're going to attach a script and we're just going to call it player. 
And what we're going to do is we're first going to start up with a variable speed and we'll just make that about 10 or so. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come down here, take off our process Delta and we'll just say var velocity is equal to vector three, zero comma, zero comma, zero. And then we'll say, Hey, if input dot is action pressed, then I'm going to want to go ahead and do UI underscore left. So if the left uh, arrow key is pressed, then we're going to say velocity plus equals vector three, one comma zero comma zero. And then we're going to do the exact same thing, but for all the other inputs. So we'll just kind of grab these. And like I said, you guys don't have to to follow this, you guys can fast forward if you don't care about your character controller, but I'm going to show you guys this so that you guys have it in your back pocket. So we'll say right, we will say up, and we will say down. And then we'll just go one minus one, zero, one, and then minus one. And that will pretty much do it for that. And then we'll go ahead and say move and slide and we'll go ahead and pass in our velocity multiplied by our speed and we need to pass in a vector of which way is up and in our case it's going to be vector three dot up simple enough so that's going to give us a very very simple character controller and it's not even a good character controller i'm not going to lie to you but it's going to allow us to move the player around so if we go ahead and just click on the play and just say select current that'll allow us to run around our little scene and you notice that a our player's gone he's gone um and that's probably because our velocity since i'm resetting velocity here so let's just set speed to one i thought 10 would be good but it seems like that's too much well it seems like left he just goes flying if you go left for whatever reason but you'll notice or I guess right in this case. But you'll notice that I can move around just fine. See this? So that's really cool. That's perfect. And you can see we can walk into like the other room over here. So it's very much how you would expect this stuff to work, right? Now I'm going to check to see why. Oh, because I have 11. Well, that'd be why. Cool. So we'll just go ahead and set this to like, I don't know, eight. So I can move around the scene pretty well. Now, one of the things that we got to look at is, well, we can just run through everything, right? Which is a problem. So what we can do is we can go ahead and just click on our cube because this is our level, right? We can click on mesh and do a multiple convex collision siblings. So we'll just go ahead and drop that in there. And now suddenly everything has collision which makes things so much easier. Now you notice that it says, hey, uh, you need to put this under some kind of static object. So what we can do is we can just right click our projection tutorial, add any child node, add in a static body here, and then just grab all of our collision here and then just drag and drop it right into our static body. And that'll give us collision just like we would expect. Now what we can do is first we could pull our our kinematic body back a little bit so he does he's not clipping with this and we're going to need to make sure that if we want the player to walk through this wall we're going to need to clean this up and do our own collision now i'm going to be a little bit on the lazy side and i'll change this to one viewport real quick because i don't like two viewports here um so i'm going to be a little bit on the lazy side and i'm just going to kind of select these guys and just delete them you guys can go in and clean it up and make it pretty and, and all that, but I don't really care that much right now. So the character can just clip through the wall. It's fine. Um, but now if we hit play and we run this scene, the player can no longer run through the walls. You can see how they can't no longer run through anything, but it's exactly how we would expect the game to run. Now we could add gravity and things like that if we wanted to, but pretty much that's how we do this style of projection um, graphics.
So now that we have this, how would we go about, you know, switching cameras, right? Because one of the big things about like a Resident Evil game is that you could switch cameras, right? So what you do is you basically just come up here, right? Right click, add in a child node, and then add in an area, right? And an area allows you to define an area and uh, when something enters or exits an area, it just, then it throws out an event, right? So what we can do is we can right click our area, add in a child node and go ahead and add in a collision shape to give it shape. And then we can go ahead and make that a new box shape. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow us to define what is our collision area. So if we just kind of bring this up to be about yay big, give or take, and just kind of have it in our room, then our anytime our player walks in here, we would get notified that our player has walked in here. So now what we can do is we can come into our area, click on our node, and then go ahead and say on bodied enter, do a thing. So we're gonna need a script to pull that data back. So let's go ahead and right click our projection tutorial, attach a script to it, and go ahead and add in a game manager. And what we can do now is we can click on our area, click on our body enter, double click on it, click on our projection tutorial, and we can name our function something like on main room body enter. Then we can do some code here, but we also need to do the exact same thing, but for our other room for this room over here, right? So what we can do is we can just go ahead and right click on our node here and add a child node, add in a area node, much like we just did, right click on it, add in another child node and add in a collision shape. And then we can go ahead and define our collision shape here as a cube again as well. We can click on our area 2D, we can drag it over here, just like this. And we can just kind of pull this up and grab our collision shape and then go ahead and pull this out, just like that, simple enough. Now I'm gonna wanna make sure that this all matches up pretty well. So we'll just kind of pull this forward, grab our collision shape, take a look at it, make sure that it lines up just like that. And we'll wanna make this a little bit wider, not by much, but just enough so that when the player crosses a threshold, we're good to go. And then we can take our area 2D, we can name it hallway area. And then we can name this one main room area. And we can grab this, click on our node, click on body shape enter or body enter double click on that and go ahead and connect that to our game manager. And from here, all we have to do is just get a camera so we can right click, add in a camera. And we can go ahead and bring this camera over here, rotate it 90 degrees, just like this. And let's just kind of throw it up here. and bring it down just a tiny bit. And we'll have to adjust this later, I'm sure, but we can just call this hallway camera. And we could do the same thing with the other one if they allow us to rename it, but they don't, so that's okay. We'll just have to keep in mind that that's the proper camera here. And we'll grab our game manager and we'll just say, enter dollar sign camera orientation dot current is equal to true. And then we could do the exact same thing down here, but instead we'll say dollar sign hallway camera dot current is equal to true. Now the thing is, is we're going to have to also do the exact opposite for our other camera. Now I don't know if we actually have to do that, but I will... I just like to err on the side of caution just in case. And actually I'll put this above just in case. I'd rather have it above because you might as well set your stuff to false first 
then set your other thing to true, right? And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and hit play. And you'll notice that when we run our character into the other room, now they are in the other room. See, simple enough, but you'll notice something. You'll notice that the hallway does not quite work, right? It's all ugly because of our projection mapping, right? So what can we do to fix that? Well, what we can do is we can go ahead and go into Blender and do our own projection mapping for this room, which is part of the reason why if you look at this collection, we have another camera and we have another scene here, right? So that way we can actually show off this little bit of feature, right? So, so now we can go ahead and basically just do the same process that we did over here that we did over there. So what we'll do is we will hide our second collection. We'll go ahead and click on our camera. We'll hit control zero to make that our main camera. And then if we hit render mode up here and we click on it, you'll see that this room actually has a, you know, renderable room, right? So what we'll do is we'll go back to wireframe. We will go ahead and hit F12 to render this and we will let this render. It's going to take a minute. So I will be right back. All right. So now that the render is completed, what we can do is we can export this out. So go file, save as, and we can just drop it out as projection render hallway, let's say. And we'll go ahead and save that out. And then we close this and then we select our hallway here, which in this case, we don't want to select this hallway, right? We want to hide this hallway and select this hallway because this hallway is our actual hallway. Now, something that you guys won't need to fix that I will is I'm going to tab into edit mode and I'm going to fill that uh, section there because that section is actually not filled. I'm not sure why I forgot to do that, but now I fixed it. So now we can tab into edit mode on this guy, hit a U project from view. And then we can go ahead and middle mouse, drag this over, hit the file icon right here, projection render hallway. And then we can go ahead and tab out of edit mode, get rid of this material, put a new one on. And then we can go ahead and set that as our base color. So we'll go ahead and go to image, image texture. And then we'll say projection render hallway. And then we'll come down here and do the same thing for our mission. So we'll do projection render hallway. So we'll say image and projection render hallway. And then we'll click on our material viewport shader. And you will see that everything doesn't quite look correct. Right. If we look at this, you'll see that a, we have our specular here. I'm going to get rid of that so we can see what's going on. It doesn't matter. All these materials don't matter because it, because in Godot, we're just going to change it, but you'll see that everything is super warped and much like before, we'll just go ahead and add in a bunch of loop cuts, add in a bunch of loop cuts, and that'll basically fix it as long as we do enough loop cuts. And I hate that this is how this has to be, but I guess there's no real way around it from what I've, my research has told me. So we'll go ahead and do that. Then I'll hit a U project from view. And that should snap all this to the proper positions and everything should be correct. Now, what I'm going to do is instead of exporting out my entire collection. Again, I'm just going to export out my cube with my second camera here. So I'm going to go into my collection and drag this camera out. And you guys might not need to do that, but I'm going to go ahead and grab this. I'm going to grab my second cube and I'm going to go ahead and say file export GLTF. And I'm going to go ahead and say projection tutorial hallway. And that's just going to be my hallway right there. And now what I can do is I can go into Godot 
And then I can come up here, go to my desktop, grab my projection hallway and my projection tutorial, drag both of those in, and you'll see that they'll get imported. Now, if I hide my hallway and I bring my projection tutorial hallway object and I do a new inherited, and then I select my cube and I go ahead and I select my inspector. If I look at my camera, actually, and we go to preview, you'll see what we can see here. And then I go to my cube and then I select my material. I change my surface, select my material, go to flags unshaded so that it is unshaded. And I come down here, I check my albedo texture, make sure that it's my project projection render hallway and probably be the correct one. There we go. And you would think that we'd be good, but unfortunately the FOV of this is not correct. So let's go ahead and adjust our FOV so that it matches. So we'll click on our camera. We'll come to our FOV and we'll just tighten that up a tiny bit or maybe brought forward. It's possible that it might need to be brought forward because you can see that this isn't quite matching up even though it usually does. So let me go to viewport two like this and let me kind of look at this real quick and let's see if we drag this forward like so well it's definitely not ideal so let's take a look at our blender scene and actually our blender scene also has this problem okay well i guess i'm dumb that's my fault so we'll go ahead and tab into edit mode add in a bunch of uvs here because for some reason this just didn't get done correctly. And we'll go ahead and hit U, project from view, and that should straighten all that out. And then we'll go ahead and take this object plus my camera. So we'll just grab both of them. I don't know what that was all about. And we'll go ahead and file, export, GLTF, and we'll go ahead and GLT and export it out over top of our hallway. And then we'll go ahead and open up Godot here. We'll open up our desktop grab our projection hallway, drag and drop that in, close our previous one, and then double click on our hallway, new inherited, and let's see if that is fixed. There we go. So if I click on my camera and I go to preview, you'll notice that everything matches up perfectly. And if I select my cube, and then I select my mesh, and then I select my surface, and I click on my material, and then I go to my flags here and then I click unshaded. You will see that everything looks good. Everything looks perfect actually. So what we can do now is we can go ahead and save this and say projection tutorial hallway, which is fine. And we'll go ahead and save that. Now, if we come over to projection tutorial and we hide our cube like we did and we drag in our projection tutorial highway hallway, you'll see that we now have our little hallway, but we have a problem. If we click on our camera and we preview it, you'll see that our back area looks awful. But if we hide this and show our other one, it looks perfect. So we need to go ahead and say, okay, in our script, we can go ahead and say, all right, when they enter the main room, dollar sign, cube four dot dot show and then we can say dollar sign projection tutorial highway dot hide and that's going to go ahead and hide that object and then we could do the exact opposite here on our body enter we can show and hide our stuff just like that and now when we refresh and our player goes in the other room You'll see that it suddenly is not happy, which is okay because my code is probably wrong. So let me take a look at it. Let me go ahead and comment out show on this and let's see if it even hides our cube. So we'll come over here and it does not. Why not? I wonder. Am I hiding the wrong cube? Very, very likely. Let me take a look. Oh, it's because I'm hiding the wrong cube because I'm a dingus. So we'll come in here and we'll say 
dollar sign which cube is this actually now that i'm try now i'm starting to pay attention cube 19 i should probably have named this so that's my fault so dollar sign cube cube 19 dot hide and show my rejection hallway we'll hide that and then we will go ahead and hit play we'll run over here and then you'll see that our screen has flipped now we do have some problems here with the way that our screen is being mapped you can see that just by looking at it and my guess is because oh that's because this hallway camera is not in the exact spot that it should be. You can see how we have multiple cameras here. So much like I was telling you guys earlier with this, how this was going to be a problem. I knew it was going to be a problem. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and take our hallway camera. We just need to make sure it matches up with our projection tutorial camera. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to grab my translation, copy it, click on my hallway, paste it. Same thing with my Y paste it and i know that there's probably a better way to do this and i'm sure you guys will tell me in the comments and i'll feel stupid for it but for now this is the only thing i can think of so i'm going to grab my rotation i'm going to go ahead and paste that and i'm going to go ahead and grab my other rotation and i'm going to go ahead and paste that and now we need to go ahead and minus 90 from this to make it 9.2 and the reason why is because we have a, nine, a 90 right here so you can actually do math in here by the way they actually allow you to do math so now if we look at our preview and we hide our cube it's just not quite there yet and i wonder i might just need to cheat it and push it forward a bit i don't really want to do that but i might have to i don't think i'm going to be able to get away without doing that so if I just kind of grab this object on its normal, so if I go to local space and I just kind of zoom this camera in a tiny bit, let's grab two viewports and select this camera and preview it. There we go, that's good enough. So what we'll do is we'll hit play and then we'll come in here, we'll run in this room and you'll see that we now are in our other room. So we can kind of run up here and there we go. It, it works like we would expect. Now you can see that it looks like our cube is getting hidden even though it shouldn't be. So we can come in here, take a look at our code and oh, this is not set to 19, that's why. There we go. So now if I come in here and I do this, and I go back, you'll see that everything seems to work like we would expect it to. So that's method one. I have two methods to show you guys, remember? So the next method is pretty complicated, but a lot simpler in other ways. And how to do it is we're gonna do what's called a screen space shader. And it's basically going to project an image onto whatever our camera is looking at. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start with a new scene here. So what I'm going to do, actually, you know what? We'll just duplicate this scene. I think it'll probably be easier if I have a scene to start with instead of having a scene to, to completely go over. So what we'll do is we will go ahead and go scene save scene as and we'll say projection tutorial second method and what i'm going to do is i'm going to come in here and i'm going to really clean this up because i don't need pretty much any of this so we'll go ahead and get rid of this we'll get rid of this node we'll go ahead and keep our kinematic body and our collision and our main areas and our camera so really we keep everything pretty much and what we're gonna do is disconnect our script here. So we will detach that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click, add in a child note. I'm gonna add in a mesh, and I'm gonna go ahead and add in a mesh instance. And what that mesh instance is going to be, and let me change this, because this is getting cluttered. So I'll go to one viewport and get rid of my output, and pull this over. 
And what this little mesh instance here is going to be is it's going to be an object that is going to act as my screen space object. So we're going to go ahead and click on our, our empty here and we'll go ahead and add in a quad mesh. And then we'll come down to our material, click on our empty and do a new shader material. Now I am not a mastermind at shaders. This was something I kind of cobbled together off of Reddit and a few other places. So, you know, thank you to some of the code that's out there and some of the things that are out there that basically did this for me. So what we'll do is we'll open up our shader, create a new shader, click on that, and we will get started with our code. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to type shader underscore type and we'll say spatial and then we're going to say render underscore mode unshaded comma draw depth always okay so the way that the shader is going to work is is going to basically render out depth. And I'm going to have to show you guys how to do that inside of Blender. But basically what you're doing is you're rendering out depth to be able to show like what objects occlude other objects, if that makes sense. And it's really cool and super, um, it's really amazing actually how it works. So what we'll do is we'll say uniform sampler 2D and we'll say albedo. And we're going to want to tell Godot what this is. So we'll say hint underscore albedo. And then from here, we can go ahead and say, all right, uniform sampler 2D depth. And what that's going to be is that's going to be our albedo texture and our depth texture, okay? And then we're also going to need to calculate our uh, near and our far values. So we'll say uniform, near, and then uniform, float, far. And we're going to have to go ahead and tell Godot where our vertexes are going to be. We need to tell it's a screen space texture. So we'll say void vertex and we'll say position is equal to a vector four vertex comma one. And from here, you'll see that it suddenly snaps this thing to our, our actual view. So when we move around, unless we're not looking at this, at this uh, texture here, it will snap to our screen. So that's something to keep in mind is if you look away from it, it doesn't show up. So you got to make sure that you may want multiple ones of these. So that way they show up on your screen like this, if that makes sense. From here, we can go ahead and do our fragment shader, right? So we can say void fragment, and then we can go ahead and start doing the rest of our coding here. So we can say albedo is equal to texture albedo comma, and then we ought to tell it what we want it to attach to, we want it to attach to our UVs, right? So UV, and then you can't just assign a texture to an albedo, you need to assign an RGB value. So we'll just say RGB, and that will assign an RGB value to our albedo. And actually we need to do lowercase RGB, my apologies. All right, so you'll see that we got our thing back. And now if we go ahead and click on our mesh instance and we go ahead and we click on our material here and then we go into our shader parameters and we drag on our projection render, you'll see our attached to our project here, which is pretty cool. So now what we can do is we can come in here and we can say, all right, we've got this far. So we just need to figure out how to make this 
full screen. And what we can do to do that is we can just go ahead and adjust our mesh size. If we just kind of adjust this to the right size, we'll be good to go, right? So we can just kind of adjust this to whatever size we need. So if we go into our camera here, if we click on this and go to preview, you can see that our camera actually has our image, which is perfect. Now, one thing that we'll have to make sure is we have to make sure that our camera is the correct resolution. So we'll go ahead and go to project, project settings, and we'll come down here to our window settings, change this to 1920 by 1080, and then we need to go ahead and tell it to stretch 2D and keep. And that's gonna go ahead and keep this, no matter how big or small our screen gets, it's gonna go ahead and try to keep this the correct resolution, if that makes sense. So that way when we hit play and it opens this up, it's the correct resolution, if that makes sense. So if I hit play, you'll see it's the correct resolution, exactly how we rendered it. Now, something that you'll notice, and in, including when we scale it down, you'll see that it keeps our resolution. And we have to make sure we have that or else our illusion will not work. One thing that you'll notice though, is where is our player? Our player is supposed to be here, but he's not, right? Well, that's where the depth texture comes in. What we need to do is we need to mix our depth with our texture's depth, but our texture is an image. It doesn't have any depth. So we have to go into Blender and create depth. So let's go into Blender. And let's go ahead and select our camera here, our first camera, and hit Control Zero to snap to that camera. Let's hide our previous one and turn on our new one. And then let's go ahead and render out our depth texture. Now, how do we render out a depth texture in Blender? So we can click on this little icon here that's called Layers. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And that will take us to our render properties. And then we can come down here and go ahead and turn on our mist and our Z pass. And now we're going to have to re-render everything again, unfortunately, just to get these passes out. So we'll go ahead and hit F12 and we'll let that render and I will be right back. So now that rendering is completed, what we can do is we need to get that depth pass out of our render. Now, how can we do that? Well, what we can do is we can go up to compositing, click on use nodes. You may or may not see this. I see this, I don't know if you guys do, but go ahead and click on use nodes. And then you can see that we have our depth texture right here. So what we can do is we can drag this up to our composite. And if we look at our render, you will see that it is basically white which isn't great, right? Because you would think that you could use your depth pass, but instead we should use our mist pass. Our mist pass is an actual zero to one scale of our depth, if that makes sense. Now, what we can do is we can hit image, save as a copy, and go ahead and send out our projection render underscore depth in my case. I'm gonna go ahead and click save as image. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go into Godot, go into my desktop, drag this over here and import it into Godot. And then we can go ahead and attach that to our mesh instance and our material here. So we'll kind of drag this over here and drop it in. It's gonna go ahead and import it as a depth texture. And we need to go ahead and hook up our depth texture. So we have it in here, but now we need to actually get it working, right? So what can we do? Well, we could just say, hey, depth is equal to our depth texture, right? Texture depth comma UV and see if that just takes it. So dot RGB like that, but it probably isn't gonna take it. And the reason why is because it's looking for a float or a vector three. 
So what we can do instead is we can do a little bit of math. And I hate math as much as everyone else, but we need to do it. So what we can do is we'll keep this and we'll say float depth is equal to, and actually we'll say redefinition of depth. So we'll just call this depth underscore T for texture. And we'll say depth minus texture depth T comma, and we need to give it some UVs. So we'll say UV dot X. And what that's going to do is that's going to return the depth of our texture, if that makes sense. And then we'll just go ahead and pass in depth right here. But you'll notice now everything's broken again. Everything kind of got warped a little bit and stuff like that. So the reason why this is um, to start it is because we need to project our depth image, basically. And we can't do it like we did with our albedo because it's, I mean, it's not quite the same. I don't know how to explain it, but it's not the same. So what we'll do is we'll say vector four. So vec four. Temp is equal to vec four. Zero comma zero comma. Our depth value here comma one and then we need to go ahead and take this and multiply it by our projection matrix so that way we can kind of get our z depth if that makes sense and you can see it's start it's kind of starting to work so we'll say and then we can say vec4 clip underscore space is equal to projection matrix multiplied by temp. And what that's going to do is that's going to take our depth and it's going to bring back our vector four with our depth in it. And then it's going to basically multiply it so that way we can get our, our front to back of our camera. And now what we can do is we can go ahead and say clip underscore space dot Z divided by equal to clip underscore space dot W. And now what we can do is we can say clip space dot Z is equal to 0 0.5 times clip underscore space dot Z plus 1.0. And then from here, we can go ahead and say clip underscore space dot Z. And there we go. You'll see that not much has changed. Now, the reason why not much has changed is because we need to determine our actual depth of our image. And that's where this little depth image comes in handy. So we can say is depth multiplied by our far minus our near minus our near again. And if all went well, that should pretty much do it for us. So now we're going to need to readjust our mesh instance here and see if we can get this to match up pretty well. So let's go ahead and go to view, two viewports, camera preview, and let's adjust this so that it kind of shrinks right up against it and do the same thing here. Now, like I said, this code doesn't necessarily come from me. This comes from somebody on Reddit. So uh, this utterly magenta from Reddit, thank you for basically the code. Um, this person's way better at uh, shader math and, and stuff than I am. So if you ever see them on the good R Godot, uh, be sure to tell them thank you for this. But from here, what we can do is we can go ahead and come into our material and then we can start setting our near and far. And what we're doing is we're saying from this value to this value, we want to be able to see, I guess, our distance, if that makes sense. So what I can do is I can make this go out and you can see kind of what it's doing. 
Now, what we can do is we can go ahead and grab our depth texture right here and drag it into our depth texture. And then what we can do is we can set our far to something like 60 or maybe even a little higher if we want to. We'll have to kind of play with our player controller. And you can see one of the big downsides to this, by the way. But what we could do is we could play with our player controller here and kind of bring him back into the other room. I think 60 will work. And you can see though how this method works. Now, this method is not perfect. If the player comes up here to the front, you'll see suddenly they're starting to clip into the image, right? So what you would need to do is you would need to go in and adjust your actual depth texture. So if we were to show it in file manager, let's say, and we were to open up our projection render in something like Krita or Krita, depending on who you are. And we'd have to drag in our depth texture like so, and then kind of come in here and see where it's all dark. We'd have to come in here and either crush this to help you know, bring out the whites. And then we'd also have to come in here and grab like a brush with white and just kind of brush in here what we don't really care if it gets occluded, right? So like, for instance, I don't really care if any of this gets occluded. Obviously, I'm going to do a pretty dirty job, but, you know, we can get a, you know, a somewhat okay job just kind of coming here and do all this with white. And I'm not saying that this is perfect by any means, so don't don't come and yell at me. But basically, I could just kind of do one of these numbers. There we go. And then file, save as, and then we can just do our depth texture too, let's just say, so we have a comparison. That's fine. If I go into Godot and I grab my depth texture too, and I select my mesh here and my material, and I drag this on here, you'll see suddenly the player is no longer being occluded. And obviously I didn't do a very good job, but you can see how that kind of works, right? Now, one of the nice things about this method is if I come in here and I hide all of my geometry. So if I come in here and I just straight up hide my entire scene like this, it's gone, right? All I have is my collision, but it still looks like my scene exists. Now you can see I'm definitely not perfect in my depth texture here either because I just kind of faffed with it and made it whatever. So if I put this back, you know, it'll look better probably. But I can go ahead and just take my kinematic body and let me hide my mesh instance for right now and just drag this back here like so. If I turn on my mesh instance and I hit play, actually, I think it's going to play my other scene. So hold on. Let me hit play on this one. You'll see, well, A, my mesh needs to be wider. So let's fix that. So let's go into my mesh instance and take a look at this. So let me see. Grab my mesh instance. You really can't see it, but I can. So let me adjust this so that it's proper sized. There we go. So now I can literally walk around here and it works like you would expect. Now you can see my projections a little messed up because I broke it, but you can see how it would work effectively. So that's kind of how that would work. And like I said, this isn't a perfect representation of how it operates, but it does work fairly decently for what it's worth. Now, the nice thing about this is this method, when we want to switch out from one camera to another, instead of switching out like we would, where we would just kind of do one of these numbers and then the character would just switch over, we could actually just switch out our image instead, right? So the player, when they walk into this area, it would just switch out to a new picture. So we would have to go into Blender here 
and re-render our scene and that would basically handle that. So if I hit control zero and I re-render this and I'll be right back. So in this case, you can see that our depth texture is pretty much mostly black. So what we'll do is we'll go to our compositor. We'll go ahead and hit shift A, add in a viewer node. And then we'll go ahead and hit shift A, add in a color ramp. Whoops, not color key. Color ramp node. And we'll just grab our mist pass here, drag it into our factor, drag it into our viewer, and then go ahead and turn on our backdrop here. And then we'll just kind of crunch this up and see if we can get this to accept our depth pass. I don't know if we're going to be able to though. If you want to, you can hit V by the way to back out. This might be one of those textures that we might need to to uh, go ahead and just do as gray. So we'll just kind of pull this up a bit because unfortunately, I don't think the depth test for Blender is good enough to be able to recognize that this is uh, not OK. I mean, we probably don't even need depth, to be honest, uh, probably. Well, we will probably need it. Well, maybe not. We might be able to get away without it, but let me go ahead and dump this one out. So we'll just take our color ramp here, put it into our composite tab over here, image, save as, and then let's just do projection render hallway underscore depth. And we will save that as an image. And then we'll go ahead, go to Godot, and then go ahead and Go to our projection tutorial, go to our projection, go to our desktop and drag our projection render hallway depth into Godot. So Godot is going to pull that in. And from here, we'll go ahead and click on our hallway camera, switch to our new preview. And you'll see everything's all wonky. If we actually hide our image here, we preview our camera, you'll see where we're at. Um, we can actually go ahead and take our player and move them into the hallway real quick. And like I said, it's really hard because there's no objects here. So that's one kind of one point against this system is that it's really hard to know where your player is at any time without looking at your, your uh, collision mesh here, which I mean, it's doable, but it's just annoying. If we go ahead and turn this on and we go ahead and click on it, click on our material and then go ahead and change our albedo to our hallway like so. Player can now run through our hallway. If I select it. And they're not getting affected by the depth as much so now for us to be able to do this what we can do is we can go ahead and right click our projection tutorial second method node and attach a script and just call it game manager 2 i guess and we'll say on ready let's go ahead and say dollar sign and i think i have it just called mesh instance so let's just call it projector and we'll say, go back to our script and say dollar sign projector dot set material zero comma. And then we, here we can pass in a material. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make multiple materials with this because I think that'll be easier. So we'll go ahead and save this material, save as we're going to make a folder and we'll just call them room projections and we'll just call this hallway and then we can do the same thing but with our other room so we'll just go ahead and drag in our projection render and we'll grab our projection render depth and put that in save save as and we'll just call it main room dot tres 
we can go ahead and set our material. So we'll come up here and say export array comma materials or material in this case. And we'll say materials and I'm missing my var here. So export array materials var materials. And then from here we can just say materials and we'll just say zero because we already know where the player is going to be they're going to be at the first instance of this thing right so we know that that's good now from here we can do the exact same stuff that we did with our previous one if we click on this disconnect it right click our body entered go ahead and do it on our projection do the same thing here disconnect yes right click connect and then connect it to our hallway we basically do the same thing. We just grab our materials here, paste it, paste it, change this to one instead of zero. And that should, in theory, work for us. Now we're gonna need to go up to our projection tutorial, click on our inspector, and go ahead and add in two materials for it to have. So we'll just come up here, go to our room projections, get our main room in zero, get our hallway in one. And then in theory, if we hit play and we did everything correctly, we should be good to go. So we'll go ahead and click play scene. You will see that we are in the proper room here. So we'll see that we're in the proper room. And you'll see that uh, our collision's a little bit funky, so we might wanna clean that up. But we can run around this room just like you would expect. And then we can go into the other room and you'll see that we are a little off in our camera. I'm curious why that is, but I think we're off in our camera somewhere. Not quite sure what's going on here. So let's take a look at our other, oh, I know why. Because we forgot to set our cameras up, which is my fault. So what we can do is we can go to our game manager and basically just grab this code here. And we can just come in here, paste it, grab our code from here so we can get our hide and shows in for our cameras and paste that in. And then that should fix it. That's my fault. So we can run over here, go in here, and now we are in our other room. Now, I don't have any collision on this room, I don't think, or I have very minimal collision on this room, but you get the idea of how it works. So of the two methods, which one is the better method? And the answer is there isn't really a better method necessarily. They're both two ways to handle the same situation. The first method is really, really useful because you can see everything in 3D. You don't have to deal with this funky shader that messes up your view every time you're trying to do anything. I mean, granted, you know, we set it up so that this object could get shown on, you know, on start. So therefore you could just have it like this and it would be fine, but it's a pain to work with. You know, it's, it's a lot simpler to work with in some ways because you don't have to worry about dealing with all those meshes and the projection and things like that but this method also is extremely hard to use and to make look good that's not to say it's impossible it's just to say that it's hard so what do you guys think which one's a better method out of the two let me know in the comments below i'd love to hear but uh with all that being said that's all I have for you guys today. So if you like this video, hit that like button. Hey, if you dislike this video, go ahead and hit that dislike button because I am here to make content for you guys. This video, as with all of my videos, was a viewer suggestion. So if you have a viewer suggestion, please throw them in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to look at them. I'm still working on that Silent Wolf tutorial that I've been working on for almost two months. I just haven't had the time to get back to it with all the other tutorial requests. Um, but that one is also there. So I do take your guys' uh, requests very seriously. And hey, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and throw them in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you guys have or really just talk to you guys in general. But if you guys wanna to talk to me on a more informal form, you guys go ahead and jump on my Discord. The link is in the description 
for that, and I'll be more than happy to talk with you guys about anything. But that is all I have for you guys today, so thank you so much again for watching, and I will see you all next time. Thanks.